good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is, again, Jitsuko Hasegawa, and I'm serving as a co-chair of the um, inter-program expert team on data representation, maintenance, and monitoring. It's called IPED DRMM. And also, I'm working for um, RA2 uh, as a theme leader in data representation and metadata. So I'm uh, always welcome you to ask questions about code forms and data representation. So it's an honor to be here today. <laughs> so let me <laughs> take a seat. <coughs> so today's talk uh, it's, it's about table-driven code forms, uh, its migration plan and its vision. So this is also a very acronym prone <laughs> field, and I'll try not to use too much acronyms. But please stop me anytime if you don't, uh, if you encounter the acronyms you don't know, because if once you get stuck with the acronyms, and then <laughs> uh, you'll be having a hard time to follow the rest of it. So <laughs> please stop me anytime. So this is today's content, and I'll briefly cover the concept of table-driven code forms first and rationals for migrating to TDCF and also talk about WMO's TDCF migration plan. And I'll cover the migration status of regional association two, um, which I have been doing as a team leader in RA2. Um, the later part will be sub-regional TDCF migration strategy, and the last one will be some discussion with participants, of course, um, about TDCF and VPPC Doha strategy. So let me start with the concept of table-driven code forms. Um, this content might be too introductory <laughs> to people who you are already familiar with this concept, but I'm doing this because I want to make sure uh, we all are on the same page about this. So I'll keep it short, but um, so we are talking about table-driven code forms. This acronym is TDCF. Um, I hope you, the community, <laughs> be familiar with this acronym at least. <laughs> and um, actually, there are three code forms in TD, WMO's TDCF. There are grip, buffer, and CREX. I'll, I'll review this, uh, uh, what these acronyms stand for later, but probably three are the important parts. And my sense is grip and buffer is a binary code. And the buffer CREX, uh, CREX is an alphanumeric code, but buffer and CREX share the tables, so they're pretty much the same structure. And the table-driven de code forms, code forms are defined defined by volume 1.2 of the manual on code. So, the, so our, so my expert team on data representation, maintenance, and monitoring is working for maintaining and developing this particular regulation, technical regulation of WMO, so manual on code. Um, in contrast to TDCF, um, traditional alphanumeric codes, um, sometimes called it TAC as an acronym, this is um, defined by volume 1.1 of the manual on code. So these are now uh, code forms we are talking about here. And this is a, a little bit by talk, but um, I want to, I'd like to talk a little bit about the acronym AN. Sometimes you might encounter the acronym of A slash N. This is an abbreviation of alphanumeric, and this is contrasted to binary. And some people use AN um, as a, as, uh, to represent a traditional alphanumeric code, but actually a table-driven code form can be alphanumeric. So as I said before, CREX is an alphanumeric table-driven code form. 
So the table-driven code form is um, is a word contrasted to traditional alphanumeric codes, which means these are not table-driven. So I hope this clears a little bit about these acronyms. So getting back to the concept, um, I I have here um, a very one example of the structure of buffer product. And I, I'm not going to detail into this structure, but one important thing here is table-driven code form has a section three, which is a data description section. And data description section is looks something like this. This is, o this is only um, first part of, a, of one example. And this actually is not a data itself, but this describes what the next data section includes as a data. So this is kind of metadata about the data. And this one file includes both data description section and data section. So the, the list of, uh, this is called list of descriptors. Descriptors is uh, one of the keywords here. And how do we know what these descriptors mean? And then we need to go to the tables. These tables are in all included in the manual on code. And the tables are basically definition of descriptors. We, by referring these tables on the manual, you would know which descriptors means what. And in, in this example, if I remember correctly, 301089 means a national station identifier. So this is actually a set of descriptors, but you don't need to understand this. But so all these descriptors have a specific meaning, and you you would know what they are from the tables. So this is a concept of table-driven code form. <laughs> so this, these are the characteristic of TDCF. Um, there are basically three. Um, as, I, as, as I showed in the previous slide, TDCF is a self-describing, so which means each data carries format information inside along with the data. So this is very different from, for example, a sign-up, which, which is one of the traditional alphanumeric codes. So sign-up, you have only station identifier and data, and you don't have any format information in there. Of course, you can know the format from the manual, but the data itself doesn't have a data format. But, the, but as I said, as, as I showed in the previous slide, the data itself has always the data description section. So this is called self-describing. And also T TDCF is of course table-driven, which means any product can be defined by a set of descriptors defined by table entries. So from these two characteristics, we can conclude that TDCF is therefore flexible and scalable, which means you can define new code forms only by adding table entries, which means you don't need to change encoding or decoding software fundamentally. So what all you need to do is just adding table entries. So we can easily add new, fo new code formats. So getting back to the three types of table-driven code form. Um, one is GRIB. This is an acronym of gridded binary. And this is uh, specifically designed for products represented on grids. So the, all the numerical weather prediction models are basically represented in this code form, GRIB. <coughs> the next one is buffer. It's a binary universal form for the representation of meteorological data. So um, this is li literally a very universal form, and this this kind this this form can describe almost all kinds of data, but there are some except exceptions. So this is a very important part. 
the exceptions are actually plain text. So like CP forecast or warning is not really the data format. Uh, buffer is not a data format for this kind of information. And also images. Images is not described by buffer. Um, uh, I have the numerical weather prediction here, but actually buffer can, technically can represent a numerical weather prediction model. But um, GRIP is optimized to represent those graded data, so it's better to use GRIP generally. So the CRX is a character form of buffer, you can understand like that. So uh, this is a character representation for exchange of data. So the, as I said before, structurally the same as buffer. So, but it, it's alphanumeric, so easier for human to read. And but um, sometimes size is a bit is a bit a constraint because it is alphanumeric, of course. But sometimes CRX is used. So, uh, yes. When do you add? Uh, when do you need a new code? When does that happen? The typical example is new instruments come in and new physical quantity is available as an observation, for example. You need to, uh, you need a new code form for reporting that. That, that often happens in satellite. So yeah, people um, develop new instruments every three months or something. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so there is a um, WMO migration plan to TDCF, and it's a lo o ongoing and long project, like probably starting around 1990s, I think. And all the rationals I'm listing here is um, data format needs to migrate to TDCF because it is flexible and scalable, as I said before. So the traditional code forms are developed very carefully and used a lot, but this is not very flexible. So once a new instrument is introduced, we'll have a lot of work to do if we need a, if we develop a new traditional code form. But in contrast, in TDCF case, we can easily um, easily develop a new code form just by adding a new descriptors to the table. So nowadays there are a lot of new instruments, for example, and then we need um, flexible code forms as well. <coughs> this is one rational, the one and biggest rational for this. So as I said before, satellite products are the most successful example of making the best use of buffer flexibility and scalability. So the satellite people develop new instruments very frequently and new products. All these um, TDCF can accommodate all these needs and requirements very flexibly. So this is why the TDCF is most successful in satellite world. The second and as important as the, the first one is um, the data format needs to migrate to TDCF because it can contain metadata associated with observations. So um, please don't be confused with me this metadata as a with metadata because <laughs> this is not related to with metadata. So what I what I'm saying by metadata here is, uh, for example, about station observation location or quality control information. So as I said before, traditional code forms only include station index in data, um, as you can imagine in final, for example. <laughs> so if you use this data, you need to retrieve uh, location information from volume A, for example and you combine this volume A information and station index and then probably put into NLP. In contrast to that, table-driven code forms include 
can include location and quality control information along with data itself. So it always comes together with data and location. So you don't need to retrieve from outside documents. So this is said that uh, this results in better assimilation results. This is the second rationale for migration to TDCF. I would like to cover a little bit the drawbacks of TDCF. Um, TDCF, of course, are not perfect. For example, um, as you see, <laughs> TDCF is not necessarily very easy to comprehend first of this. And also table version needs to be updated and managed very carefully, but it, this is very, very troublesome process. And there are a lot of mess in operationally. So this is one of the drawbacks of TDCF. And also this all, the, all the descriptors always linked to the table in the manual. So even in CREX, it's not easy to, easy for a human to read, and the table-driven code form is optimized to um, computer handling. This is basically not for human. And the fourth one is a little bit complicated, but um, I said um, buffer and CREX or grip, of course, um, can represent virtually any kind of data, but if people start new start using uh, start using new templates, uh, new data forms by themselves, and it would be a chaotic chaotic. So there are some templates, um, which is a kind of standardized set of descriptors to represent some kind of data. So, but if you you need to use templates. Sometimes you don't uh, you don't have elements or data for specific descriptors that are included in templates, and you will fill in if I'm missing. And what happens in in reality is there are temp templated buff, uh, kind of data, for example, but in actually uh, actually most of the elements are missing. In these cases, actually, this is not that flexible and small, even. So this is um, <laughs> this is uh, one of the drawbacks here <laughs> of TDCF. So um, in this slide, I would like to explain um, one um, often of often heard misunderstanding about TDCF. Um, actually, TDCF is a format uh, specifically designed to be used for international exchange. So if you imagine how, how for example, as one sign of data um, produced and communicated to users, um, there, uh, this is a process of, like, it's a typical process. So there is a observation report and probably going to the processing system for including quality control or something. And then probably the data will be archived or sent to supercomputer and used in NLP system. Or also the data is used of course real time monitoring. And probably the sign up is um, produced and uh, sent to message switching system. And this is also used to domestic users or sometimes it will be displayed in the website of uh, meteorological service, for example. And uh, the interna international exchange is one of the users, I mean GTS with international exchange is the one of the users of this data. So the what TDCF, uh, so what TDCF is intended to be used is actually only this part. So um, if you want to send your data to GTS or WIS for international exchange, you are required to use TDCF. But um, 
uh, for for the rest of the usage, you don't need to you don't need to use actually TDCF, and many in in, in reality many people don't use TDCF in the rest of the rest of the usage. This is also good to know. <coughs> so from here. Um, uh, the topic is about WMO's TDCF migration plan. And WMO has a plan for migration for various data categorized into five groups. So the five groups are common data like synods and temp pilot and cl climate. And the second one is satellite. The third one is aviation and fourth one is maritime and fifth is miscellaneous. Uh, so um, some of the obsolete ones, climate temp or hydra, and probably you don't see so much these days. These ones are not actually in the migration plan, so you don't need to migrate this way if you have one. <coughs> so this is the timeline of WMO's migration plan. So the most common data started operational exchange from 2005 and actually started parallel distribution. This means you can distribute stack and both stack and buffer. And actually you can stop disseminating tech anytime with prior notification after November 2011. And the target, con <laughs> target of completing the migration is November 2014. So the satellite is also started um, parallel distribution in 2007 and um, aviation aviation data is um, in many cases aviation data are managed by um, international civil aviation organization ICAO and ICAO actually abandoned the migration plan to TDCF and they are developing an XML based new co data code form so um, now the uh, only AMDA is uh, under the table TDCF migration plan. And the AMDA is complete, has completed migration in 2007. And uh, maritime, maritime, for maritime data, the also operational exchange started in 2007 and parallel distribution started in November 2012. So the target of completing all the migration to TDCF is 2000, November of 2014. So this is kind of a big milestone for what we are working, working on. <coughs> so um, the basic responsibility for migrating all the code forms to TDCF is basically each center is responsible to change data format. But uh, some of the small centers have only one or two, I know, for example, and this having, having or purchasing or maintaining the software, encoding, decoding software of TDCF doesn't pay. So by, by mutual agreement, um, RTH provides tech buffer conversion service for its area of responsibility. So some of the RTHs are doing this for migration. And also um, off-the-shelf conversion software is available. So some of the company um, provides off-the-shelf software for TDCF, my, uh, TDCF conversion. <coughs> so this is the status, so what have achieved and what have not. Um, in category one, traditional surface and upper reports and climat, this is just, I, I would say, just in, in progress. So some of them are, have migrated, some of them are not. So the satellite data category two is the most successful. So probably most of the data are now, are now disseminated in buffer. So aviation data, Yes, uh, as I said before, AMDA is kind of created buffer almost all by almost all the centers. And also ICAO abandoned TDCF migration plan. So for example, like CAS 
or other other code forms are not under the migration plan. It's also good to remember. So the category four is oceanographic data. So this is also in in progress, but uh, running a little bit late because uh, the template template development by JCOM delayed a little bit. But they are almost um, completed the development of basic data template and this migration is also pro pro in progress. <coughs> so the second part will be talk will, will focus on the migration status of RA2. So So I'm this um this is a result from the WW uh, World Weather Watch monitoring from October two thousand eight to October two thousand twelve. And in regional association two, migration of sign of is actually doing quite well. So we have almost sixty well around sixty percent for sign of in buffer. Um, on the other hand, um, tent, <coughs> tent report, um, migration of tent report is not doing well, uh, doing as well as signals. And it's like 45% always, like um, latest four years. <coughs> and just for um, easier understanding, I made a map of RA2 countries with um, migration status <laughs> to the deep um, deep blue uh, represent uh, this country this country um, disseminate tech both tech and buffer so it's considered to be completing the TDCF migration and the light blue there are some the part uh, they are disseminating tech and Country buffer. So some of the data are disseminated in buffer as well, but not all. The pink, the light pink part is um, the countries are only disseminating tax data, and the red one is a silent, so they don't tax either. But the sign of um, maybe we we'll focus on the. Region. Yemen and Oman. Actually, they are uh, the JETA, Altiet JETA is uh, serving as a conversion center and they are converting some of the tax data but not all. But actually, this is just a small, small problem and I think it will, it will improve very easily. So, sign of data. It, um, the Gulf region almost complete the re complete the migration. So this is another su another surface data from ship. So ship migra <laughs> migration TDCF migration of ship is a bit uh, not very good. And in RA2, well, not not many countries. Uh, not many countries disseminate ship itself, but um, it's all, all only actually Hong Kong and Japan are now producing buffer. So this is ship is not that migrated. So the ten upper air is another example. And tax um, temp is also not that migrated well. As I said before, like um, station number wise, like forty five percent almost. So there are a lot of room to improve. So this is um example climate. <laughs> climate is also many countries only disseminated tax and not buffer. So this is also there are also have a room to improve. So the latest, oh sorry, um, so far, <laughs> e 
if you have any question from participant, then I would be happy to answer. <laughs> I don't understand the question. Um, if it There are some. Uh, yes, of course. Any data should be available. Scripty, yes, yes. So we are. Um, uh, I didn't go. Uh, the grip, uh, yeah, yeah, grip two is recommended now, yes. Net CDF is a totally outside governance. Yes. This is another. No, it, it can't be official because uh, WMO doesn't have any governance or control of NetCDF, so it can't be an uh, official document. But this is basically a user choice. It depends on um, users or, or producers and users' requirements. But this is not the WMO's official data corpus. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I, I would let, let's not get confused. Let's not get confused here. This is a talk about the PDF migration. It is not a talk about this and not about this metadata, not in any way. Uh, in, in no matter which way you look at it, it has nothing to do. Nothing. So um, here we talk about um, some migration that has to be finished, and then the director would like to advance in Qatar and uh, in the South region and in the region. So uh, we need to look at why um, some are migrating as well and others are not migrating as well, and then to see what we can do so that the others are also migrating as well. And as we have seen, it is not very difficult. We just need to find out why. And tomorrow, we will talk about the last problem, how we can impose uh, in metadata the product and so on. So we will have this covered, but now let's focus on why um, some are migrated, others not. Yes. Yes. The color is on the line for the Amdar data. Uh, Amdar, yeah. Yes. Uh, now this migration is going in future, whether there is another migration for all data to come in external form. Yes, it, it's possible, so yes. <laughs> so once again, we will migrate to you. Yes, yeah, but XML is not so necessary. So it's advisable to one. migrate to PDCS to other uh, I mean, you, you are talking about AMDA or other... You are also talking, now I hear colorless drawn the line, uh, abandoned category. Yes, yes. Whether it will come to other areas also, category sure. one, category two. Um, now I'm not seeing uh, any specific migration plan so some for other options, system. whether there is a another major migration plan will come in. I, I, to to I can't to say I it wouldn't be it won't be happen, but now in foreseeable future, <laughs> other common and satellite data is not going to XML. It, it's it's not just but the uh, um, the aviation data except for AMDA is going to XML. So you don't need to migrate to PDCF, just going to XML. That's that's the important part. So um, let's keep going on the migration status. Of, oh, sorry. <coughs> so I would like to go to the regional strategy part. <coughs> so regional strategy for migration to TDCF um, can be separated into two parts. One is migration of traditional reports, and the second is production and dissemination of a new buffer or select or grip data products. So the first one is, as I said before, the WM migration plan is saying, is targeting uh, completing the migration November 2014. So all these very common, very common and basic data need to migrate to TDCF by this deadline. On the other hand, um, to make the best use of buffer, uh, Using using PDCF is not about is not only about you uh, making SINOPS and cl climate pilots as a TDCF, but there are a lot of possibilities for producing and disseminating new <coughs> buffer to like grid products and data. So, for example, um, some global data descriptors don't have very regional specific or program specific data. So if you have a very regional specific or program specific data and product, you can always develop a template of TDCF and represent the data product and exchange internationally. Also, um, as I said before, TDCF is recommended to include uh, station, net station data or quality control data. So if there is um, regional quality control scheme, for example, this information also can be included in TDCF very easily. And this will dramatically improve the end of the accumulation results. 
also um, observation observation is pretty um, depend on which kind of uh, which no, sorry which kind of weather you have. So some observation instrument information also can be included in TDCF. So these are more positive way of using TDCF characters and specific. <coughs> so you might want to think about all these things as well, not only migrating the traditional reports. But uh, we still need to migrate the traditional uh, traditional reports to TDCF. So I'm um, this is the same data, but um, I counted uh, the number of RDSM stations for the Gulf and the, the adjacent uh, countries, and um, number of fact reports and number of buffer reports. So as I said before, um, most of most of the countries are migrated to buffer data. So I can see some a uh, small smaller number in Yemen and oh sorry <laughs> Yemen and um, Oman but I think it believe I I, <laughs> I believe this is a small uh, problem in conversion software so uh, we can find a way to improve easily So this is the temp. Um, so also I counted the RBS RDSM station that is supposed to produce temp and counted number of reports in CAC and also buffer. And now any temp, uh, any temp reports are produced in buffer in this region. And actually in, in in one year ago and before, Saudi Arabia only produced some of their, their temp report in buffer. So I, I believe um, they have already a conversion software for temp. But there, there, there is some problem here. <coughs> so I gave a only Sinop and temp examples. But um <coughs> Analysis is um, LTS Jetta already has been providing conversion service for Sinop, and <coughs> ah, sorry, no. some stations in Oman and Yemen are lacking in this uh, from Sinop data. And actually, Saudi Arabia is producing or did produce um, temp and climate buffer. So um, and. Oh, and as I said before, most of the members have up to 35 observation stations or, or less. So I think RTH conversion would work well in this region rather than each, each center has, a, has installed encoding and decoding software for TDCF. Saudi probably LTH Jetta provi keeps providing the conversion software and th the region will be uh, uh, will be in good status in migration. <coughs> so I kind of very I, I drafted a very brief implementation plan. So if we identify if we can identify LTS Jetta's contact about conversion software and a sub regional leader of TDCF migration to work with RTH Jetta and Alice to steam leader, which is me. And then we'll, we'll probably have a very quick improvement in the status. So what I wanted to do in, in this workshop is kind of make a implementation plan. So of course, um, actually I'm as a um, team leader of data representation in RA2, I'm, I have been having a little bit hard time to contact with LTH Jetta and identify <laughs> anyone to work on this. But their software is now working, so <laughs> there should have, should, should, there should be someone working on this. So might, you know, any, any of you, you know, have some contact with Jetta and identify a contact to work on this? That would be great. Oh, that would be great. 
So uh, actually, the conversion itself will be uh, done in Jeddah, but still, I think the sub-regional leader on this matter will work very well. So probably any volunteer, maybe from Qatar, then I can closely work with work on with this, and then. Uh huh. Uh huh. Ah, okay, I like this one. So probably the coordination would solve all the problems. Yeah. <laughs> so the schedule, the ideal schedule will be we can identify gaps in migration early, early first half of this year and start conversion tests later this year and your region will be completed. It will complete the migration by the deadline next year. <laughs> so any questions so far about the sub-regional migration plan for traditional report? Okay. <coughs> It's one, um, it's one of the countries in this area install and take the responsibility of conversion. That would be a plan, but there are no um, collecting scheme or, or data itself other than RTH. So it's a little bit harder, but it could be. Yes, um, yes. Yes, of course, a any center is welcome to um, in introduce their own software. You can develop or purchase software. That's also another strategy. Yes. <coughs> Take risk. <coughs> So the last part is our uh, DCPC strategy and PDCF. So I I hope I can put this subject into context of this workshop, this workshop and uh, DCPC um, building planning of Qatar. So um, as a summary, um, PDCF is a data format. So of course this is appropriate for some data products especially numerical weather prediction model output, which will be GRIP generally, or satellite observation products, and many of conventional observations. These are appropriate to represent in TDCF. But as I said before, TDCF is not, not appropriate for other data and products, like text-based warning, for example, or imagery products. So it's very obvious that user and business needs give data format requirements, not vice versa. So data format doesn't give user business needs. So this is important. <coughs> so um, let me take um, uh, take an example of SMC Tokyo. And um, as Nishikawa-san presented in this morning, our SMC Tokyo Typhoon Center has various products and I just classified the, all the products into um, data format. So of course we have imagery, a satellite imagery or even the global spectral model, whether global spectral model is disseminated as a weather chart as a fax form for example. And of course um, for example we are have storm surge model chart as well. These are the imagery products. The grip is the numerical weather mo prediction model output. So global model or global wave model 
or ensemble selection system output, or all these products are represented in grid format. The buffer is actually relatively less, and then we have satellite clear sky radiance and satellite atmospheric motion vectors. Those data are disseminated in the buffer format, and also tarep and shot or cyclone track. Um, in contrast, all these uh, tropical cyclone advisories and um, guidance kind of stuff, these are all plain text. So this is not the this is not the not the part of PDCS. <laughs> so probably the DCPC planning of data and products is all about listing your business needs and user needs, uh, listing all the data and products based on user and business needs and classify or identify which data format is appropriate to each one and make these kind of charts. <laughs> so this is um, this is another uh, NWP product flow chart and this, this is very similar to the one I already showed. But um, so the supercomputer basically makes uh, all the NWP products and archives <laughs> disseminated in, for example, radio broadcasting in a text chart image, for example. And also NWP results are used in real-time monitoring. So NWP products are provided in files, files or bulletins, for example. Or as a DCPC product, a uh, web photo also provides an image of NWP product, uh, NWP results. So in, in this chart, for example, um, the PDCF, I mean grid, is used only this part, or only the file part. So in other cases are independent from PDCF. So once again, um, user and business needs decide data format, not vice versa. Data format doesn't give requirements to DCPC. That's very important. <coughs> so the last slide, um, let, me, let me summarize the planning process. So as emphasized in all the DCPC presentations so far and also in the presentation from WM Secretariat, the identified target users is the most important and the first, very first part of DCPC planning. So who is the user? <coughs> and then based on the target user's needs, we identify business requirements so what kind of regional specific or program specific data products are necessary in this DCPC? And then next step is identify target users requirements for data. So which kind of dissemination systems will be used to um, give data products to the target user? Or what, uh, how, how often they need these data products? For example, once a day or every six hours, and etc. And some, of course, some dissemination system has a constraint in data or product size. So this is another constraint as well. And the next step will be probably the identify the appropriate format to represent. So some NWP data will be represented appropriately in grid format. Some observation data will be represented in buffer or CREC. Some focus or warnings will be good in plain text. And of course, I images, and including the web photo, will be very effective in some cases. This is the step of, this is the phase of um, making a decision on which data format is appropriate. And next, uh, the last part is develop development or purchase of software and uh, design how, how you handle all the data and products. 
So this is all my, uh, this is all what I prepared for this section. So I'm happy to answer any questions and dis like discussions. <coughs> Actually, uh, probably e ECMWF or uh, kind of providing a program. It's a, I think it's a Fortran based program, <laughs> but also <laughs> it's not. <the> <laughs> That's why people don't use it. But anyway, <laughs> but um, as I said before, the the structure is very simple. Yeah. So once you get through all the um, uh, the Structure of buffer that decoding uh, encoding software is will be pretty simple. So I think any programmer can do. So and also that um, other than manual, there is a guide to migration to TBCF. So that might be a good resource for interactive. Yeah. Yeah, in, in that case, of course, you can develop your own software to encode and then convert to buffer and then send it by yourself. That would be also good. Yes, many, many centers doing this. But uh, but the routing of the bulletin is not uh, is not related to yeah, yeah. that tra yeah tra uh, conversion. So JETA will be easier to route your own buffer. So the conversion is a little bit need work, but routing will be will what wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which message? So it depends on message switching yeah, system. Uh, some of the message switching system. Yeah, 
yes, yes. Uh, some of the off-the-shelf message switching system software includes this tech buffer conversion software as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good solution as well. Yes. <coughs> Yes, it's the, the responsible, responsible.